Uh, hi, everyone. Um, here is an example of uh, a, a tour caliber player who is using the ground really well. So let me first explain uh, you know, what I uh, see here. And then I will uh, play the, the whole thing. So you will be able to see uh, continuously how uh, the golfer uses the ground. So here at the beginning of the, uh, let's first, let me explain these three graphs. Uh, the middle one is the ground reaction force. Uh, it only shows the vertical component. The red line shows the combined ground reaction force. The green is the force acting on the lead foot, only the vertical component here. And then the blue is the force acting on the trail foot. Again, it shows the vertical component only. Um, and then the, the low one here is the moment arm formed by the combined ground reaction force about the center of mass. So currently it's passing through the center of mass. So the moment time is zero, but as it uh, moves away from the center of mass, now the moment time increases. And this is when the moment time becomes the longest during the backswing and so on. And then the, the graph at the top is the, uh, the torque produced by this ground reaction force. And the red line is the, uh, the torque produced by the combined ground reaction force. And then the green is the torque produced by the lead foot force. Okay. So um, if we look at uh, this golfer, first overall, the swing time is slightly over 800 milliseconds. So uh, zero is the instant of impact. And uh, so the swing starts uh, from here. So overall swing time from the beginning of the back swing to an impact is slightly over 800 milliseconds. Uh, elite men's average is a slide over 1,000. In other words, he has a really uh, fast backswing, active backswing here. That's why overall he just uh, takes a, a slide over 800 milliseconds to uh, start and finish the swing. So definitely uh, his backswing should be uh, quite active. Um, so, and also at the beginning of the uh, backswing, you will see big difference between the force acting on the lead foot and then the one on the trail foot. So he is starting the back swing with a large force acting on the lead foot. In other words, he has a good uh, lead side push at the beginning of the back swing. And with that, uh, the back swing starts. And then here, here you will see the two forces are equal to each other. That means the uh, center pressure should be right at the center. And then he has a good uh, trail side push here. And then uh, and, you know, the, the force acting on the lead side is really small. So he has good shift of the center pressure toward the, the trail foot. And then from here to here, basically you will see this long unweighting phase here. So uh, his force is uh, less than the body weight. So before the unweighting phase, he has good push. So this red line is above the uh, one body weight line here. So he has a good push, uh, mainly using the trail foot. And after the good push from here to here, you will see uh, uh, this unweighting phase. And then the unweighting peak occurs right before the top of x -wing. So this event six is top of X-wing, but um, so um, he has good unweighting here. And then the force starts increasing. And then it reaches the, uh, the maximum value around here when the club is uh, uh, aligned almost vertically. And also if you look at uh, the top graph here, the green line is the torque produced by the lead foot force. And then the red line is at the one uh, generated by the combined ground reaction force. And here the, the values are quite similar. That means uh, the torque generated by the trail foot, uh, this is close to zero. And as you can see, uh, the trail foot force is generally, if you extend this line, is passing near the center of mass. So in this case, the trail foot uh, does not generate much uh, torque. So almost 100% of uh, this red line, uh, this torque is coming from the lead foot. They are very similar here. 
And then the torque uh, becomes zero at this point when the, the force passes through the center of mass again. So it's right before the impact. So up to this point, he's generating a torque uh, in the counterclockwise direction during the downstream. So let me um, run this continuously. So the uh, how the center of mass, uh, center of pressure moves, and the, how the direction of the force changes. So now it starts in, uh, inclining toward the target, and then the moment I'm here becomes quite long. And then center pressure quickly moves toward the lead foot and the force becomes a vertical as it grows. Now, if we go to, uh, go to the down the line view here, um, this line here shows the swing plane. Okay, so, um, uh, and the one thing uh, you notice here is that uh, at the beginning here, the hand is uh, way below the swing plane. This is normal. Now, some people say, uh, you know, the golfer returns to initial uh, alignment and they hit the ball, but it simply is not true. And um, so if your coach, uh, you know, uh, teaches that, then uh, just uh, forget it, okay? So here, uh, the, the golfer starts from uh, this low hand position and then, one thing really interesting here is that uh, when he reaches the top of uh, you know, top of action here, you'll already see that uh, the force is acting forward and backward. So uh, he actually starts, uh, changes the direction of the forces uh, uh, in the middle of the backswing. Now the forces are generally uh, upright along uh, more vertical, but then before he reaches the top of backswing position already, these forces acting, the individual uh, foot GRFs are uh, in, you know, showing front, uh, the forward and backward components here. So with this, it's easy to uh, spin around. Okay? And at the top, the club head is here. And then the club head is coming down toward the swing plane. And then following the swing plane here, good planar motion here. And then eventually the club head will start moving uh, about the uh, swing plane here. So this is the late uh, follow through position here. Again, I will just uh, run this continuously. Look at the, these forces here showing the forward the backward component. And then soon the direction will change. and then going into uh, the downstream. Now the next one is uh, an example of, uh, again, a tour caliber uh, player who's not using the ground that well. So uh, uh, let's compare this uh, golfer with the, the one we just saw. Uh, at the beginning of the, the backswing, here, as you can see, uh, his uh, uh, forces acting on both feet are very similar. So in other words, uh, the center pressure uh, will be uh, located at the center. So uh, from the beginning, um, you know, he has a balanced, um, you know, ground, uh, golf ground interaction here. So uh, he will not be able to actively start uh, the backswing. So from here, you can still load on, uh, on the uh, trail side reasonably, but as you can see, this red line shows not much push here because he's uh, uh, basically having his peaceful uh, backswing and not much push here. And then, as a result, uh, you don't see much uh, unweighting here. So this long period of uh, unweighting, but uh, the unweighting is not much. Okay. And also what we, you can see here is that the overall his swing time is uh, 
uh, over 1,000 milliseconds. So it, it's a lot longer than what we just uh, saw earlier. So he doesn't have a good unweighting phase here. So as a result, his push in the downstream is not as much as uh, you know, uh, the one uh, we saw earlier. So basically, uh, his backswing uh, is uh, uh, inactive, and um, that's why overall uh, he's uh, having issues with the, the interaction with the ground. And also, uh, at this point, he reaches the, uh, the maximum torque uh, in the downstream. But as you can see, the red line is actually larger. So the torque produced by the lead foot is greater. But then the total torque is uh, only this much. It's because if you look at the trail foot, trail foot is passing the left side of the center of mass. So the trail foot is generating a, a clockwise torque in this case. The lead foot is uh, generating a counterclockwise torque. So a portion of the torque generated by the lead foot is canceled out by the, the torque produced by the trail foot. That's why the total is uh, slightly uh, less than uh, uh, this value here. So this is the uh, men's average, okay? uh, elite men's average. Uh, so overall, uh, you know, we see uh, differences. And then also, again, let's go back to backswing here. During the backswing, as you can see, his ground reaction force is generally upright. It's vertically aligned. It's because his horizontal pushes, uh, pushes are uh, equal in both directions. So the horizontal components are canceled out. And overall, the combined ground reaction force only shows uh, you know, uh, the vertical component only. That's why uh, the force arrow is uh, vertical like this. So then this uh, arrow stays close to the center of mass. So generally, uh, the momentum is quite short uh, throughout the entire backswing. And then uh, later it will start uh, the inclination here. But again, uh, the, the momentum length uh, is not as long as what we saw earlier. So in, uh, in this golfer, uh, in general, we see that uh, the momentum is a lot shorter than uh, the previous one. And also the torque changes the direction about here because now the force arrow is passing through the center of mass. So in his case, the torque becomes uh, clockwise a lot earlier. So uh, uh, this is what we see. Again, let's go back and then play this. The force arrow basically stays uh, vertical. That means that he has an equal uh, push outward. So the horizontal components are canceled out. And then here he has more, uh, more force acting on the trail foot. So uh, the center of pressure is close to the trail foot. But as this progresses, the difference between the two forces uh, decrease. So then later, the center, uh, the center of pressure will basically stay near the center of the stance all the time here. Because these two forces are quite uh, similar to each other. So he failed to shift the center of pressure toward the lead foot in the downswing. So again, in the downswing, the, the force arrow stays close to uh, the center of mass. Now, in his case, if we go to the down the line view here. So at the top of action here, as you can see, the individual foot forces are pretty uh, much vertical. So uh, he started uh, the, the, the forward backward uh, action uh, for the downswing a lot later. Uh, in the, the previous golfer at the top of action already the individual forces show uh, you know, forward and backward components. So it's uh, delayed. And then coming down like this. Again, I will play this. He generally keeps uh, his knees uh, uh, flexed here.
Okay. Now let's compare these two uh, directly. So uh, the upper graph shows the torque generated in the frontal plane. And then the lower one is the clevet speed. Uh, so this shows uh, in uh, meters per second. So uh, first, uh, what, what you can uh, see here is that uh, in terms of the overall swing time, uh, the red one, the uh, player M starts from here and then finishes the uh, swing here, it's this impact. But the, uh, the right one, he starts from here. So uh, a lot longer. And then generally the torque uh, generated during the backswing early on is uh, really small compared to uh, this one here. So in other words, uh, this golfer uses a lot more active backswing here. And then uh, this is the top of backswing for uh, this golfer here. And then the, this is the, how much he generates at the top of action. But the red one, he's generating this much torque here. It's above uh, you know, the average maximum torque uh, generated by uh, elite man. So from the beginning, he's generating this much torque. And then the torque further increases to uh, this point and then starts decreasing. But the green line here, he's starting the, back, uh, the downstream from here. It reaches this peak value here and then start decreasing. And also it becomes negative or clockwise way earlier than the red line here. So at this point, his torque already uh, changes the direction. So in terms of the magnitude of torque, we see big difference. Now the lower one is the, the clever speed. And we can see that the, the red one shows a lot larger uh, clever speed in the backswing. So he is uh, turning faster. And then, he starts uh, the downswing, uh, the green one starts the downswing here, but the red one starts downswing here. Uh, and then uh, during the downswing, you will see uh, uh, that uh, there's a, a eventually large difference in the clever speed uh, at impact because this golfer has a lot larger torque generated. With that, he would be able to uh, accelerate his body uh, rotationally and then overall uh, generate a lot larger clever speed here. So uh, you know, basically we see a, a big difference in terms of the outcome between the two golfers. This is the one who is using the ground really well. And then this is the one who is not using the ground that well. Okay, thank you. <laughs>